Well, on this special focus here on headlines today, we're going to tell you all about the INS Arihant, India's first nuclear-powered submarine that will launch this weekend. We also have two very, very special guests to tell us more about the implications of having such a platform as part of our strategic asset and arsenal. We have Vice Admiral Raman Puri. He's a well-known defense analyst. He's formerly been the flag officer commanding-in-chief of the Eastern Naval Command, the home to India's submarine fleet. We also have Brahma Chalani, well-known strategic affairs analyst who's written before about this very program that we're talking about. But first, let's tell you about how, when India's nuclear submarine is commissioned a few years from now, it stands to be a potent and hiding launch platform for nuclear missiles. Missiles that can roar out from beneath the waves and zero in on India's adversaries thousands of kilometers away should the need actually arise. India may be a late entrant into this exclusive club of countries that operate nuclear ballistic missile submarines, but India's moment is definitely now. 1970, Indira Gandhi orders the nuclear submarine program. 1976, scientists create the first design. 1983, Project Advanced Technology Vessel formally launched. 1998, construction of the first nuclear submarine begins. 2007, nuclear reactor integrated. 2009, India's first nuclear submarine is launched. India is now tantalizingly close to its biggest strategic dream. The dream of a nuclear triad capable of unnerving any country who dares to wage war. India already has land-based ballistic missiles and fighter jets capable of delivering nuclear warheads into enemy territory. But now, the long-held ideal, the nuclear triad, is virtually complete. With the launch of India's first nuclear submarine, INS Arihant, the country finally has a secret and completely invisible place to launch nuclear ballistic missiles from. We are looking at China. We must be able to target uh, cities in China uh, from anywhere in the Indian Ocean. That would require ballistic missiles of the range of three to 5,000 kilometers. There are weapon systems and sensor systems on board the submarine. They will be, which have already been tested either in the laboratory or at sea. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's, uh, like I said, the fine-tuning will take some time, but will give us a capability which is uh, a real capability. The INS Arihant will have the ability to sink out of sight and remain unseen and undetected for enormous amounts of time. Its nuclear fuel will ensure that the submarine's operational stamina will be limited only by crew fatigue and food supplies. The stealthy submarine never needs to surface and will therefore leave no telltale reference points for anti-submarine ships to zero in on. And if the going gets really tough, the submarine can perform its chief function, nuclear deterrence, with underwater launched ballistic missiles capable of delivering a nuclear warhead into the heart of China or any of India's other adversaries. Keeping our immediate neighborhood in mind, uh, that is our two uh, nuclear armed adversaries, I would say for India, if uh, we can get a missile with a range of about uh, about 5,000 kilometers, it should be good enough. Uh, you know, there's been a parallel uh, project for developing an uh, underlaunched uh, weapon. And uh, so that is also progress. So uh, once the submarine is uh, operational, the weapon program, you know, integrated we weapon program will also move along those lines. So I think very soon uh, we should have the platform with the uh, weapon capability on it as well. While India's scientists labor to build an intercontinental range ballistic missile, when INS Arihant is commissioned three years from now, it will be armed with a K-15 Shorya ballistic missile with a 750 kilometer range. Thirdly, we must be able to design and, and uh, install uh, nuclear armed ballistic missiles of sufficient range on this uh, submarine. 
but under development is a secret missile designated KX, which when ready will be capable of delivering a nuclear warhead out to 3,500 kilometers, putting all of India's adversaries within striking range. For now, the silent killer will go through almost three years of tests. But when she's ready, there's every hope that she'll be a credible projector of national power. With Veena Ramakrishnan in Mumbai, Ajit Rangachari in Chennai and Danish Siddiqui in Gurgaon, Shiv Arur headlines today.